The Central Nevada Museum is one of the gems in the entire state. Its collection of artifacts and remnants and objects from the past are one of the richest. But the stories that this collection tells are not just local to Tonopah or to the region or even to the state, but these stories are significant to the nation. Hi, I'm Ted Fay, and I like finding history. It can be in a museum, a hotel, a park, inside or outside, in a church, a house, a store, and of course old buildings and even ghost towns. Wherever there were people, they made history. So I've set out to find those cool places and things that have a great past. Just think of me as your history delivery guy who brings you new and fresh servings of history to go. I arrived in Tonopah and was told that I would find one of the founders of the Central Nevada Museum in what I thought was kind of a strange place. I was directed to the Tonopah Cemetery. Alan! Oh, hi, Ted. Hey, good to see you. Well, what an unusual place to meet. Well, why I chose this spot, yeah. because this, this is a spot that gives the uh, testimony of the hardships encountered by many in uh, these early day mining camps. And, and yeah. the thing of this place is, as I look at it, it is really almost the quintessential Old West Cemetery. It looks almost like a movie set. If I was to do the Old West Cemetery in a wild <laughs> west town, this would definitely be what I would picture in my mind, right? Just in this one little area, we have cases of pneumonia here, the plague, uh, numerous mine accidents, ladies of the red light district, suicides, gunshot wounds, the whole gamut. Mining life was tough here. I mean, here we are in the snow. Some of the pictures I've seen and, and what I know about Tonopah, they, these guys lived in tents when they first got here. Tents, that's right. How cold does it get here in Tonopah? Oh my gosh, it would, it would be zero, and two the, above. And the wind? Five below, the wind chill, 16 below, possibly. And my research showed that they had to have a crew down here mucking the snow out of the grave on the day of the funeral. On the day of the funeral, there's yes. enough snow in the grave Absolutely. that they had to get down and get the snow out. Uh-huh. Wow. Wow. And, and it must have been warmer in the mines themselves. Well, uh, it's been said that, that that attributed to a lot of the cases of pneumonia. The uh, miners all day long wow. down in normal temperatures in the lower levels, yeah. and then coming on up to freezing weather it wasn't long before they were stricken with pneumonia. What's the relationship between this cemetery and the museum itself? Back yeah. in 1977, when the Central Nevada Historical Society was formed, our first restoration project was restoring this whole cemetery. Wow. And uh, we had no map, no plot map, nothing. Just a few of the uh, dilapidated graves around fences and the stone markers. The, the graves, how did you match them up? How did you figure out who, who was where? Well, we knew there were a lot of people buried down here, but nothing at all on the surface. And uh, so I resorted to this method. It's a dowsing. What it does, underground pipelines, utility does the same things, but you go over a grave okay. site, they'll cross. You go between the graves, they'll straighten out. Over the next grave, they'll cross. You're kidding me. I mean, you're not just doing that. You're not like, oh, I know there's a grave here, so I'm going to do that. No, it, it's it just a, does a it? natural phenomena, for lack of better words. What the explanation is, uh, I don't know. And it's not from lack of not trying to find out what the explanation is. You wouldn't know ordinarily, like there's a marker here. But ordinarily, if you're out doing this, you wouldn't know where the body was, no. right? And as luck would have it, three years later, a map, a plot map with the names was donated to the Historical Society. Oh, your, your kid just showed up? I mean, how does a old, from what, 1910 just shows up? 1910s, it was found in a shed in a nearby mining camp around Mountain Nevada. You mentioned the people that passed away here. Is there any stories that you have of anybody in particular that's buried here? Well, these graves, for instance. Yeah. Two brothers came over from Serbia, died June 20th, 1907, in a tragic mine accident. 
on that particular day, he was loading ore cars underneath the bin. Right. And as his brother went out just for a short visit that day, he saw his brother, the one on the ore car, was trying to apply the brake to stop it from rolling. He jumped on to try to save his brother, who was trying to apply the brake on the ore car that was coasting away. And uh, both went underneath the wheels, and uh, here they are. There are so many incredible stories here, and, and the fact that this is part of the museum, we, we, I'd love to, for us to head on up to the museum. The Central Nevada Museum is located right off of Highway 95, which is Tonopah's Main Street. The museum couldn't be better named, as it's truly in the center of Nevada's north-south route between Las Vegas and Reno. You can't miss the collection of buildings and mining equipment, and inside, there are relics and artifacts of daily life from diverse cultures. But much of the collection tells the story of America's last great frontier mining boom. So I asked Alan, just how much was mined here? Over $150 million worth of silver produced here. In, in that time? At that, that time. What about this particular piece here? It came out of one of the banks, one of the several banks in Goldfield in yeah. the boom days, Goldfield, wow. Nevada. And uh, oh, if we could only talk, I bet millions passed back and forth from this counter alone. I bet, I bet it did. And it's, it's so magnificent. The marble, the, the detail is just great. This itself is a masterpiece. It, it absolutely is. But I also notice over here we have uh, items from World War II, it looks like. Yes. Right? this. Uh, exhibit depicts the history of the World War II late great Tonopah Army Air Corps base. Over 6,000 men and women were stationed down there mid-1944. The thousands that went through here on their training cycle and from Tonopah they went right on over these air crews, pilots, they went right on over to Europe for the Pacific. A lot of sacrifices, 130 names I've come up with uh, so far. The majority of them killed in, in training accidents down here. And that's what the memorial is outside then for, for, for these, these people that were lost. This display itself is dedicated to all those servicemen that trained down at the Tonopah base and were stationed there in World War II. Clearly the training here was designed to win the war. I mean, I'm looking yeah. at you now and I see this bomb over here. So that was part of the training, right? Absolutely. This was one of the 100-pound uh, blue bombs they practice with here on the bombing training missions. Little known fact was the predecessor of today's smart bombs was tested down here. Even in recent times, right, there have been some top secret aircraft that have come out of there. Right? Oh yeah, very top secret. The stealth uh, fighter. Uh, and I still get requests for information on certain accidents, events at the base from grandchildren of those that trained here, uh, uh, nephews, nieces, uh, looking for closure. In its own way, this old base was responsible too for the way we we're able to live today. Well, it certainly does give us a feel for what it took out here in the desert to really prepare the, the, the military for battle and to ultimately prepare for victory. Yeah. Well, let's take a look around and see what else we can find. Alan took me back to the research room. It's here where scholars, historians, authors, and genealogists come to work on their latest projects and discover the museum's truly hidden gems. Its amazing collection includes the actual newspapers from the mining boom era of central Nevada. This one goes back to 1902. 1902. Tonopah Bonanza. Wow, and, and I'm just looking here. This article here, shot on the desert, uh, a cattle feud ends in Joe Ney being shot. Jim Smith's horse was shot from under him. Uh -huh. I mean, those are the kind of stories that, that bring it to life for us, right? I mean, we could talk all we want about the digital age and being able to access everything through the internet, but when you see this stuff in person, live and in person, you really feel like you literally can touch history. I know, that's uh, my favorite, personally. This was the plot map that was found in the shed that you use to coordinate your work with the dowsing to find the bodies to this map. Absolutely, and that was three years after our initial uh, beginning of restoration of the old cemetery. 
the fact that this map was found in the shed at the time that Alan was doing this work is an incredible coincidence and really sort of confirmed all the work you were doing with the dowsing. I know, and you wonder about coincidences like that because everything fell into place. Finally, Alan showed me what looks like a classic western mining town, right here on the museum grounds. He pointed out a miner's wood frame home that he said was built over the original tent. That was the tent initially, and a miner built a house around it. It came from Manhattan, Nevada, 50 miles north of here. Now when we had this hauled in from Manhattan, it was just a local contractor who went out with his low boy trailer. We loaded it on, jacked it up, wrapped the trailer underneath, tied it down, and got here. Luckily enough, it was still intact when we pulled into the museum grounds. This alone really brings the life of a miner alive. What's one of the most interesting items right here in the yard? We have the old uh, Chinese tank house. Chinese tank house? Yeah. What would that be? That was from an old borax mine site, 1800s. The old rusted out tanks that were used in the borax operation were utilized as houses for the Chinese workers. They lived in that? Actually lived in it. Wow, in that little tank, or what looks like a little tank. A little tank. Um, the one we have here on the museum grounds, they had built an addition onto it, in fact. We have the 10 stamp battery out of a mill from Manhattan, Nevada. A stamp, let me describe that, that's the rods going up and down that would crush the ore into a powder before it would go into the uh, milling process to withdraw the silver or gold. This has been an incredible tour from the cemetery to the museum to this yard to be able to see the way the people lived at the height of the last great gold rush and silver rush in the United States. Absolutely. And this is where it happened. The important work that the Central Nevada Museum does here in preserving the remnants and artifacts of what was the last great mining rush on the Western frontier needs to be preserved, and not just for this present generation, but for future generations as well.